Hello and welcome to part three in our Printix tutorial series. Today's topic is going to be networks. We'll have an overview on managing networks, renaming networks, creating new networks, discovering printers and remote networks, the availability of printers based on networks or locations, and making printers available across networks. First of all, what we can see is we have two physical devices that are both associated with network one. Um, and also my computer is on the same network, network one. Network one is simply a generic name. And as you roll out Printix client uh, onto computers in different subnets, um, we will just add network two, three, four, five, etc. What that gives us is um, when we go to the Printix client and open up the printers, because my computer is on this network one, together with these two physical devices, I will only see as an end user, these two devices I can now add and uh, do things with. So let's go up into the networks over here and rename this network to something more meaningful. Call it Berlin, okay. So what that's done is simply rename that network and both machines, both these devices are already associated with uh, that Berlin network, as is my computer. So there's no change. We go back to Printix client, open the printers list. Of course, that's not relevant for me as a user. It's a more a organizational thing within Printix to show resources based on location. Printix does that automatically. It filters the list of printers based on your network. So how, the, how you set up the networks um, is entirely up to you. Uh, you could have it represent um, different locations, different subnets, departments, however your network is uh, structured. Let's add another subnet to our tenant, Printix 31. So we actually discover more printers that live on a different network. How we do this is, in this case, I'm just gonna use a remote desktop tool to connect to a laptop that is sitting on a different subnet and um, what I've done here is I've uh, navigated to printx31.printx.net slash admin which gives me of course the same admin panel as we've been working in uh, working on so far um, I can go into the settings over here so I see the exact same thing I've got these three printers that one user one computer what I want to do is install Printix client on this machine. So I go down to the settings, scroll down, and here we have our executable for Printix client. We also have the MSI down here um, and the DMG for Mac. The MSI, of course, you can uh, enroll with Microsoft Intune or any other software packaging tools that uh, you might be familiar with. If um, you would like to learn more about distributing Printix client through Microsoft Intune, again, I would recommend, and let's just start this installation in the background here while I show you this. This is, by the way, a German operating system. So um, how to distribute this through Intune? Simple as that, search for Intune. There we go. And this contains all the information that you need to um, set up Printix client for your tenant within your Intune. It's all there. Okay, let's go back to my remote desktop. There, Printix client is finished. Okay. We need to log in once more. And this is, of course, again, as, a, uh, as an administrator, I need to log in. Uh, as a user, once this is rolled out, I don't need to do this process. It's single sign-on with Windows 10, so it's completely transparent to the user. Okay, so now that we've done that, Printix client is installed and authenticated on this uh, computer, on that remote network. All I need to do is go back to my admin panel. Just refresh this. There we go. There's my laptop and it's now on an unknown network. It takes a little while for it to update the version. There we go. Um, and I now, of course, want to associate this computer with a network that is meaningful to me.
Before I do so, I can't actually do any discovery on that network. We first need to make this network known to us um, before we start doing the SNMP broadcast looking for more printers. So how we do this is we open up the networks once more and we just go ahead and start creating that network. Amsterdam, for instance, there we go. So far, this is just an empty shell. We now need to associate that laptop, that computer, with this network name within Printix. That's very simple. We just simply uh, click this show only unknown networks up here and we can see there's our network thumbprint for the laptop that we just installed Printix client onto. And you can see this is a completely different subnet. They are completely separated. Um, all I need to do is go to those three dots and say add to network, pop this down, say Amsterdam, okay, done. So now we have two networks within Printix, two different subnets physically behind those names. And I can now go to my printers and start the discovery from here. I'm asked which network I want to discover printers on. I'm going to say Amsterdam that. Now this is going to send a signal to the laptop, to Printix client on that laptop to do another SNMP broadcast and scan that network for printers. There we go, we found another two printers and we can see right away we have printers on Amsterdam network and Berlin network. So let's just sort this by name, there you go. So we've just found that Rico device and this other Lexmark device here. Let's have a look at the end user experience. Uh, what has this, uh, this done so far? So I'll go to Printix client on my Berlin network and still I only get to see the brother and the Lexmark. Nothing has changed. If I go over to that, just minimize this. Okay, open up Printix client on the Amsterdam network and you will see I only get to choose between those two devices that actually live on that network. So we filter by location. Uh, in this case, it's locations. You can have it as per department or however you want to set up your networks. Now let's imagine I want to print to this Rico device that is sitting in Amsterdam from a computer that lives in Berlin. All I need to do is open up that particular device, go to the print queues, open up the print queue I want to share across locations and enable this feature called enable printing via the cloud. Save that. And what this does is it opens up the visibility for this print queue across all locations. So now when I go to my Printix client down here, you won't see any difference yet because it takes a few minutes for Printix client to update the new configuration out of the cloud. But we can speed this up simply by going to the Printix service and restarting it. So once it's restarted, it's going to go out to the Printix cloud, to that tenant, Printix 31, and read that new configuration. There it was, fetching data. So now it knows that there's a machine on that Amsterdam network that is enabled for printing via the cloud, and it's going to show it right there. So I can add this device even though I'm in Berlin, and um, I can now start printing to this Ricoh device. Um, Printix Cloud takes care of all the security measures uh, we need in place to actually transfer that document over to that other network. So it's encrypted with 256-bit AES encryption, sent over into that other location, Printix Client, in this case on this laptop, receives this uh, print job and relays it to that Ricoh device. So there's no need for additional VPNs, etc. Printix Cloud handles it all um, fully automatically. That's it for this session. Um, be happy to say hello again in our part four, where we are going to be talking about configuring those printers, the printer drivers, and just uh, setting up your environment ready for rollout. Remember, if you have any questions along the way, you can open up the settings here and go to support and submit any support uh, requests online or directly through support at printix.net. Thanks for listening, hope this was helpful and you'll join us again for any other demo you might be interested in.